Happy Monday, everybody. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean, and I'm looking forward to doing today's Tabata Hit Circuit with you. We're gonna go for a super Tabata Hit Circuit, so you have a longer interval and an opportunity to get that heart rate up, push yourself as much as possible. Remember, I want you to work every single set at your ultimate. So start off giving 100% and continue to give whatever 100% looks like for you as we get towards the end of each movement. I am hoping that these moves make you tired. So you should find, especially as we get into uh, some of the lunges and whatnot, that maybe you need to take an extra little break and that's totally okay. I encourage you if you need to take a second to stand yourself up, to come back into your breath, to relax. And then rejoin us with the movement. We're gonna start in about three minutes at 4.30. If you have two medium weights that you can bring to today's workout, please bring those along with you. I put the description of the workout up at the top. The first move is sort of a warm-up move. So we're gonna do a really quick warm-up today. Then we're gonna get right into those inchworms with our down dog ankle taps and continue to move through from there. If you have any questions, just let us know in the chat. I'm so glad you could join. Looking forward to getting started in two minutes. Make sure you have some water. I'm gonna grab myself a giant glass of water. Giant glass of water. spot for that. So the first weighted move that we're going to do is going to be front and side lat raises. You might find that uh, you need a lighter, a lighter than medium weight to get this motion going. We're just going to be raising up towards shoulder height. So find something that works for you. You can always hold on to cans. You can hold on to gallons of water. You can let some of that water out of your gallon. You'll probably want something a little heavier when our overhead squat press comes up. It's that time, everybody. It's that time, and you know how we're going to get started, especially if you've been here before. So we're going to get started just coming away from our desk, enjoying as large of a lateral side-to-side -side step tap as feels good for your body today. Think about how you're placing your feet down on the floor, and just like as we approach our lunges later, I want you to make sure that you're just having your knees point in the same direction as your toes. Go ahead, change direction of those shoulder circles. Really wanna make sure we warm the upper body up because we're gonna use it a lot for our first couple of moves. Awesome, go ahead, plant those feet. Focus on a larger shoulder circle. You might even wanna bring one hand up to help you control as you circle around about five times in one direction and then find five times in the other direction. Draw your core in to make sure that you're finding the rotation from your shoulder, not just turning the body. And once you've gotten five, switch over to the other side. Still breathing, nice big slow breaths. Make sure you continue to find these large breaths throughout today's practice. Awesome. Let's get the heart rate going just a little bit. We're gonna do some up downs. So you're just reaching up towards the ceiling drawing your belly in, reaching down towards the floor. See how your body feels today? 
and how much speed you can bring to it. We got 10 more from here. 10, nine, you can take a bend in your knees as much as you need to. Maybe you're just reaching towards the floor. You can't touch it all the way. That's okay. Work to keep the weight in your heels and not bring it just towards your toes. Just practicing that squat. You know I lost count. So we got three, two, one. Awesome. Just shake it out a second. Have some fun. Shake it out. Do your best worst dance move at home. And let me talk to you about these inchworms that we're going to get into with our down dog ankle taps. All right, so you're going to come to the back of your mat. We're going to find a similar forward fold that you just did. Hinging forward, placing your hands on the floor. You can work at whatever pace is right for your body to hinge forward. I want you to take a moment to bring your shoulders all the way forward. Then press up into your hands. Reach for the outside of one ankle. Press back into your plank. Press up into the reach for the other ankle. However, if for any reason you cannot do that down dog ankle tap, after you come out into a plank, you can place your knees down on the floor and just find a little bit of reach side to side. Still getting a nice stretch in your shoulders with a little bit less pressure. So either option to place your knees down on the floor or keep those hips up nice and high and down dog. And then we're going to walk ourselves all the way back. If you find that still too easy for you, we don't have any burpees today, right? Right. So if you want to, you can always have a jump at the top. Make this your move. Four rounds of the same exact thing. Our first move is not going to change at all. You're welcome. We are gonna add a lot of variety in as we move through the workout. Just trying to confuse your muscles, but continue to work on the same uh, areas of the body. So let's get started with this awesome upper body burn. Come to the back of your mat. Make sure you have some space. Maybe you wanna grab a quick sip of water. Still an opportunity to put some music on and stay inspired. We start in three, belly in, two, one. So if you want, remember you can do that jump at the top or just pressing onto your toes. Walk yourself all the way out. You're in a plank. Here in down dog, tap the outside of one leg. Plank. Then tap the outside of the other leg. One more time in this plank. Then walk it all the way back up. Stand up, option to hop, maybe even give yourself a star jump, and then start again. A star jump, you say, what's that? That's when you bring your arms up overhead like a jumping jack, and both feet come up off the floor at the same time. I would demonstrate one, but I can't <laughs> because I have to be considerate of my downstairs neighbor. Awesome, take a break. You got 20 seconds to yourself. Maybe you give yourself a nice, Big stretch through those shoulders. I'm gonna take a couple breaths in down dog. I'm gonna bring a nice little stretch to my abs and my low back here, taking a moment in Cobra, and then make my way back to my feet. Here we go, round two. Go for it, same thing. So coming into your plank. Maybe you can send those hips a little higher to the sky, reach a little closer towards those ankles. Maybe you can move a little bit faster as you press yourself out in your inchworm. Can you get your full hand palm down on the floor or do you have to walk yourself out on just the pads of the fingers? I encourage you to try to get those hands palms down on the floor to not just use your fingertips. Remember, you can take a bend in your knees and a break. Take a break, you're welcome. We have two rounds left. Can you count how many times you can get through this in round three? We're gonna challenge ourselves to get at least one more or half in round four. Round three starts in three, two, one. Belly in, begin. Make sure that core stays in. Anytime you hinge forward, it's gonna help you protect that lower back. Now remember, you can always be down on your knees and just reaching and then press yourself back up and come into your inchworm. Inchworm is a great workout for beginners. The plank is one of the best ab exercises you can do. Isolated prone ab work. It's great for anyone of any variety. Are you counting? I think I forgot. I think this is number three. So still making sure 
sure to take a break, that you got that full plank in, that you're not cheating yourself and staying in down dog. Stressing those shoulders gently. We got one more round. I'm gonna try and finish that full round to be standing up on my feet and get in a minimum of three, two, one. Here we go. So I'm challenging myself to work a little bit faster, but still mindfully, still making sure using that breath, coming into that great plank, shifting the weight forward. So my shoulders are once again stacked on top of hands, palm. And just allowing the glutes to come in line with or slightly below the shoulders. We got just over 10 seconds left. Yes. Way to go. Did you get a little further? We made it. Awesome. 20 seconds to yourself. Shake it out. Grab a quick sip of water if that feels right for you. I'm going to take a quick sip. Hydration is so important. Starting to get warm out. So I also encourage you <laughs> to make sure that you're drinking water throughout the day, not just when we're working out. Once you start to feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Keep moving a little bit. Enjoy some active recovery. That's why having music is fun because dancing without music is a little weird. But you know what? I'm a little weird, so it's okay. It's okay, whatever it takes to put a smile on your face, on my face, so important these days. Movement, 100% medicine. Let's get right into the next move. We're gonna go for alternating front and side lat raises. We're gonna start off alternating, and then in round two, we're gonna do both the same. If at any point you find yourself too tired, just do one arm and then the other. Just do whatever works for you. Try to keep moving. Remember, you can always put your weights down and do this unweighted. Make sure that chest stays nice and open and that rib cage is knit together so there's no extra arching of your back. Y'all ready for this? We start in three, two, one, begin. Awesome, so keep your feet planted on the floor. I like to have my feet side by side, but you might find that you need or enjoy a nice little stacker right here. And remember, we're working to just bring the weight up to shoulders height. You don't need to raise it any higher than that. Once those arms are lifted, you're working to keep that chest open and active. Squeeze those shoulder blades towards each other. Try not to rotate too much from the waist. Uh, and remember, if these weights start to feel too heavy, I know we have not done a lot of weighted moves in my class lately. You can always put the weight down. Take a break. We made it through round one. Put the weight down, shake it out. Give yourself some big shoulder circles and get ready for round two. So remember round two, we're gonna do both to the front, both to the side. You can even change the way that you're raising the weight instead of palms to the floor. Begin, you can do palms in towards each other, palms towards the floor, palms in towards each other, palms towards the floor. Now, I have my camera uh, at a slight angle, so I promise I'm still just lifting up to shoulders height. And keep that slight bend in your knees, keep that core tight. Shoulders are pulled away from the ears. Starting to sweat here. Make sure you're moving with control. So you're controlling on the way up and really controlling on the way down. Shake it out, feel free to put those weights down for just a second. Shake your hands out, shake your shoulders out. You can dance and shout. Shake your body down to the ground. Five seconds till we get started again. Coming back to those front and side lat raises. Here we go. This is round three of four. Are your shoulders starting to feel a little tired yet? Make sure that you're not sacrificing the form in the lower half of your body. So your knees are not locked out. There is a slight bend to your knees. Where is the weight in your feet? Hopefully equally distributed. Maybe a little bit more weight in those heels as well. Especially if you have that solid bend in your knees. 
This is a move you could even do seated if you needed to. Remember, if you're getting too tired, you can always do one arm and then the other. We made it, y'all. We got one more round to go. One more round to go. And then we've got mountain climbers. I'm sorry, I'm so mean. All right, three, two, one belly in, core tight, begin. Oh yeah, we're doing both in the same direction this time. I find it a little bit easier to do the alternating lat raises, one to the front and one to the side. Something about bringing them both in the same direction. Oof, it's really hard for me. You wanna challenge yourself, turn those palms to face up as you go for that front raise. Just getting a little bit more of that shoulder complex. Oh my gosh, activated. Remember, if you need to take a couple seconds with an extra breath, if you need to do one arm at a time, I do. That's why I'm telling you. Awesome. We made it. But be so proud of yourself because remember, those were double the length of the Tabata interval. I know if we just did a 20-second interval, you would have crushed it that whole time. Grab a quick sip of water, and we're going to make our way down to the floor as quickly as we can. Yay! All right, next up are mountain climbers. If you can do your mountain climber in a plank, you should do your mountain climber in a plank. And it's okay uh, if you find yourself with your hips a little bit higher. But if you are really struggling, remember you can bring your knees to the floor and just draw one knee all the way up. Maybe you can even tap your uh, knee to your tricep. Another option, if you're having trouble with your hands on the floor, is just to be standing, to lean against a wall or a counter and just drive those knees up and you're gonna get the same awesome work that you are would from a traditional mountain climber with a little less stress on those shoulders. I do wanna put as much challenge in my body as possible, so I'm gonna come down here to the floor, but who knows where we'll be in around four. If I can admit, I'm tired. I know I've alluded to, there's a lot going on uh, in my family life these days, and it's just like really exhausting. So please, just bring what you can to today's workout. Do your best, it's always enough. I'm so proud of you for being here. Mountain climbers start in three, two, one. All right, so we're in that plank, and it's up to you. Are you doing a mountain climber fast? Are you doing a mountain climber slow? Both are amazing work. I'm gonna alternate every 10 seconds. Back to my slow climber. The slow climber takes a lot of ab work to control, bringing that knee to the elbow. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh my gosh. Wow, y'all, that was hard. That was hard, you know? I'm gonna try and push the pace a little for this next round. And I'm gonna do the standing mountain climber that I just told you about. I have to keep in mind that I can't stomp on the floor. So move with control, here we go. Something for everyone, y'all. Halfway, halfway. Can you change it up just a little bit? Maybe change the direction that those knees are going. Make sure you're still breathing. I want to hear those breaths all the way from here. You got five seconds left. Push the pace. Three, two, one. Take a break. Awesome work. All right, with challenge comes change. So I'm making my way back down to the floor for round three. This is the last of our plank moves for the day. So enjoy that. We start in three, two, one, begin. Make sure that those shoulders 
are still relatively on top of your hands palms. Halfway. Final 10 seconds. Don't stop to hear the beep. Three, two, oh my gosh. Thank you, beep. Thank you, beep. All right, we got one more round through. What you gonna do? Make up your mind right now. Remember, you're starting with the hardest thing for you. And you can always modify, but you're starting with the hardest thing right now. All right, gonna modify just for a second. Just for a quick little interval and then finish strong for these last 20 seconds. I didn't stop though. Ooh. Didn't stop moving. Come on guys, y'all, five seconds left. Four, three, two, one. Did you see how many times I mixed it up there? Oh my gosh. There is no shame changing it up, doing what's what's right, what's smart, honestly. We're doing what's smart for your body today. All right, so the great news is next we get to stay on the floor. Grab that water. I'm not all mean, y'all. Because next up, we're going to relax that upper body and shoulders. We're going to lay all the way down on the floor. We're going to do a mix of butterfly kicks and flutter kicks. So flutter kicks, uh, your legs are going to flutter. The closer that you have your heels to the floor, the more challenging it's going to be. So if you flutter all the way up here, it's going to be pretty easy. But if you flutter closer to the ground, it's going to be harder. Make sure that that lower back isn't arching off of the floor. Tucking your thumbs under your bum can help you to really glue uh, your backside to the mat. And then you get your kick. You can kick slow, which is a little bit easier, even if you do some really big uh, flutter kicks. You can challenge yourself to get your heels a little closer to the floor than you might be able to with the fast flutter kick. So think about changing the pace if you need to during this interval to keep going. Do you like this break? I hope so. All right, after the flutter kick, we're going to go for a butterfly kick. So just opening those legs and closing them. Again, however close your heels are to the floor is going to really put a big challenge on your core and that lower back. Keep that lower back flat. Flutter kick start in three, two, one. Begin. So remember, thumbs under your bum can help with some grounding. Stay kind of floppy in your feet so your legs are engaged, but the same way that you would kick in a pool. Like we're swimming, like we're swimming on our backs. Remember, if you need to, you can come into some big, broad kicks. But I think the bigger challenge is here in these faster flutter kicks. I even like to uh, gently turn the soles of my feet inwards. I can feel it engage a lot more. Take a break of the quad. Ugh, that was some work, y'all. So next up, we're gonna go out and in. Slow down your exhale to bring down your heart rate. Think good, happy thoughts. Like, we're like halfway through. Okay, here we go. So you can take a nice cross over of one foot over the other. And remember, if that back is coming off of the mat, you're doing the same thing, just up towards the ceiling and having your feet higher helps to keep that lower back down on the mat. You can even Butterfly kick down and butterfly kick up to start to bring a little extra challenge. Open it a little bit wider to access a little bit more 
inner, outer body work. Take a break, take a break. We're gonna come back to those flutter kicks one more time. Y'all ready for this? Do, 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 do. I, I don't know if I'm ready for this, but we're gonna do it anyway. Right now. Find where the most challenging kick is for you that you really feel those abs fire up. You can take your head off of the floor if you want to. I like the support of keeping my head down on the floor. It's especially helpful, oh my gosh, uh, if your abs are kind of tired or just not strong enough yet. We're close. Three seconds left. Two, one, take a break. One more time through with those butterfly kicks. Y'all, I am so wetting. Things are getting schwitzy in here. Schwitzing like a chazir on the floor. All right, three, two, one. Does anyone know what a chazir is? It's Yiddish for a pig. Do pigs even sweat? Honestly, I don't know. So out and in this time. Oh, oh inner thighs. Oh, inner thighs. Oh. Take a little higher to the sky break and work my way down. Three, two, one. Draw those knees into your chest. Keep your lower back down on the floor. Give yourself a little massage. Little circles with those knees. They don't have to come super close to your chest because you want to keep that lower back down. Change the circle direction. Oh. Wow. So far, so good. Feeling mean again? Uh, we're gonna stand up. We've got some pulsing lunges. We're gonna do two different pulsing lunges. The first pulsing lunge, we're just gonna stay in our lunge. No moving those feet unless you're taking a quick break. I'm already sorry. We're just going to go down and up. Down and up, that's it. Keep some good weight in your front heel. If you want, you can even actually lift up off of that foot. Just, you know, just give you a little, a little something else. I encourage you to just stay in this lunge as much as possible, but if you find that you need a change before you just stop, see if simply adding that uh, glute squeeze and lift can keep you going. For the second move, we're just gonna go for curtsy lunge into back lunge. Curtsy lunge into back lunge. We're gonna, we're gonna stick with one leg for the first two rounds. And then we're gonna move to the other leg. So grab a quick sip of water. Just take a teeny little walk around the room. Try to forget about everything that I just said. Because <laughs> it's gonna be hard, right? That's why you came. If it was easy, if you didn't feel any sort of burning, are you making a difference? Probably, you're probably still making a difference just by showing up, even if that difference is mentally, even if you're just working on creating a regular routine. But if you wanna see some changes in your strength, if you wanna see your body change, you gotta bring it in it to win it, right Uncle Buck? All right, so whichever foot you want forward, it's gonna stay forward for the next two rounds. You can do a little baby lunge if you need to. Baby lunge, you got your shoulders on top of your hips and that back knee's coming in the direction of the floor. Where you got the weight? A lot of weight in the front heel, pressing up through the front heel, not just pushing up through that back foot. Starts in three, two, one. Begin, here we go. Just down and up. Down for two and up for two. Keep those hips squared in the same direction as your front leg so you're not opening your hips out 
towards uh, where your back leg is going. You're amazing. We are more than halfway through. Do you feel the burn? Keep breathing. Final 10 seconds. Three, two, one. Ooh, I'm just gonna, just gonna give myself a little self myofascial release, a little massage here of that leg that was towards the back. That same leg is about to go to the back again. Do a curtsy lunge and then a back lunge. Okay, maybe you're just stepping and stepping and testing your balance. All right, so curtsy lunge, back knee down, back knee down. Don't let that front knee go past your toe. So keep this lift of your chest as you can. Oh my gosh. Need to take a quick little break, shake it out, halfway through. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I'm only human, y'all. Three, two, Yes. Oh, I felt that one a lot more in my front leg. All right, so this time just switching it up. Opposite leg comes to the front and goes to the back. Make up your mind, back to your breath. Use those hands for balance and begin. Just the pulsing lunge. Press up through that front heel. Really practice pushing through that front heel. I know, I know your legs are already tired a little from getting that other side. Control on the way down, control on the way up. You're going as deep as feels right for you. Oh, I can't wait till this is over. <laughs> oh my gosh, we made it y'all. You're ready for our very last of the lunges. We got curtsy lunge into the back lunge. Five seconds till we get started. Plant that front foot. Make up your mind right now. You're gonna do your best. Begin. Just moving that foot, pressing up through the front heel to lift up. Do you feel the glute firing as you press through that heel? Control as you bring your back foot to the floor. So the back foot's not slam into the floor. It's a real controlled lower down, lift, control, lower. That back knee comes down towards your mat as much as possible. Oh my gosh, are we there yet? Oh my gosh, thank God, we made it. Give yourself a round of applause. We got two moves left. Two moves left, 15 minutes, eight minutes of work. Oh. We get to sit, we get to lay down again. Jessica, you're the boss of sounds. <clears throat> Make your way down to mat town. All right, so we're gonna do two different ab exercises from down here. The first, we're gonna start laying down. Legs are going to be straight. Opposite elbow comes to opposite knee. So just a really big version of a bicycle. And the second round, I want you to just do any kind of bicycle that you wanna do. Maybe you wanna stay on your forearms and just practice a bicycle kick. Maybe you wanna be up, right? Literally, literally anything you wanna do, all right? You can do the same move that we're doing for round one, and then we're gonna come into that straight leg um, runner's crunch again. Wow, so lay yourself all the way down. Take three big breaths. Get ready and begin. So opposite elbow comes to opposite knee. And then you lay back down. Make sure that you're controlling yourself on the way back down. 
If this is too challenging for you, go ahead, bend your knees so that the soles of the feet are on the floor and it can be a little bit easier to sit yourself up with the soles of the feet on the floor. I'm discouraging you from bringing those arms up overhead and using your arms to throw yourself up. But you heard me say it, if you're still struggling, that is another little option that you can bring to the party. Take a break, take your 10 second break, sorry, 20 second break. Start thinking about how you wanna do round two. What are you gonna focus on for your bicycle style crunch? Three, two, one. I'm just gonna stay. Oh, sorry, we have a couple extra seconds. All right, I'm gonna stay right here on my forearms. I'm gonna focus on just pressing through my heel. Add a little more bike motion to the party. Little circles. Quads, quads, quads. Four, three, two, one. Nice work. Take a second, take a break. Oh my God, the sweatiness. All right, coming back to those runner's crunch. So if you can, straighten those legs out. Get ready to sit yourself all the way up. You ready? Begin. Can you bring your elbow a little bit more towards the outside of your knee? So really focusing on the twist of the obliques here. And then that careful controlled lower down. Oy. You are more than halfway there. You got about 10 seconds left. And then you can either do this same move one more time or the bicycle of your choice. Take your break. Take your break one more time through. What you gonna do? What you gonna do for bicycle number four? Three, two, one, begin. Uh, I am too tired for that party. But I do like the idea of a little crunch and punch, still getting some rotation of the core. I'm gonna add in two crunches. And then some twists. I said you can do whatever you wanna do. We're working on either getting some extension through those legs, some midline rotation. 10 seconds left. Working to use my arms and not my arms. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We got one more move. One more move. And it's standing. Stand up. Look how sweaty my mat is. Grab some water. I'm gonna grab a quick refill of water. Oh, those are some great beeps. Okay, so next we have our squat to overhead press. So we're gonna grab some weights again. I'm gonna do you know what? I'm gonna grab a heavier weight. Because we're pushing ourselves to start and if you need to take it easier, it's always an option. Okay, so we're going to squat down, making sure that the weight is in the heels and your glutes go back. And then you're gonna press up through your heels, overhead press, that's move number one. Move number two, we're gonna alternate between side lunge, step in, overhead press, alternate side lunge in and press. If you don't have any weights, you just get to squat and reach. Maybe you want to add in a hop for your squat and reach. Remember, you can always put your weights down. 
Ow. I found it. We start in three, two, one. Go for it. Feet about hips width distance apart, weight in your heels, turn sideways. So you can see I'm really focusing on like you're sitting in a chair. You're reaching for the chair. I like to think that you're reaching for the chair and you're the substitute teacher. Kids are so mean and they just keep scooting your chair back behind you. So you just keep reaching for it because those kids aren't going to get the best of you. You're the adult here. Come on, y'all. 10 seconds left. Work with control. Make sure you're um, not just letting those arms fall down by your side. You're awesome. Isn't this a great one to finish with? Next, we've got our side lunge. Back to that overhead press in the center. You can always hold on to just one weight if you prefer, if it helps you with your balance. If you're holding on to one weight though, I recommend holding on to the head of the barbells uh, with both hands, as opposed to just doing a single arm overhead press. Of course, you could switch it up each time, do a single arm press here, switch the hand that you have your weight in, single arm press on the other side. That's actually fun, yay. Little throw and catch. Definitely a little easier just doing the one weight at a time. Okay, next up we're coming back to those squats to overhead presses. Last two rounds, less than two minutes of work. Five, four, three, Two, weighting your heels, begin. Squat down, push up. Use those nice big audible breaths. Make sure you're not holding your breath. Sometimes when you're really concentrating on something, uh, we tend to hold our breaths. If you find that that was you, move slower. Move slower so you can focus on breathing. There's an awesome little crunching through my body. It's waking up. Sat in the chair a lot today. It is a Monday. Three, two, one. Awesome. We got one more round through. Coming back to those side lunges into the overhead press. And then we just get to stretch. Two, one. Begin. So I was wrong. I can't count. Begin. All right, so side lunge into that overhead press. Remember, you're keeping the weight in your heels again. And you're moving with intention. You're not just throwing ugh, this weight around. Even if you're taking a teeny little step and just sending your hips back, just a teeny little bend of your knees, just practicing the balance of stepping out and bringing yourself back in. So important, a little balance training, especially as we get older. And we're all getting older every day, let's be real. We're done, awesome. Move those weights away. Ah. Take a couple big relaxed breaths. I just want you to cross those arms in front of your body, open them nice and wide. We're back to a little lateral side to side step tap. Just alternating between which arm is crossing over at a time. Let's bring it into a nice big shoulder stretch. So go ahead, plant those feet down. Ah, and whichever arm crosses on top right now, Take a nice little static hold right there. Draw that shoulder forward. Start to feel the stretch through your lats, through your back, and really in that shoulder. Take two more breaths right here. Make sure you're not overarching that back at all, or you can still take a slight bend to your knees if you want to, and open those arms really wide. Shake it out, and let's get the other side. 
So bringing that shoulder forward towards your chin, the more you really draw it forward and across, the more you're gonna to start to feel the stretch through the side of the body, down into the lower back. And through your shoulder. Two more breaths right here. Awesome, open those arms all the way wide, interlace them behind you, go ahead, bring your right foot forward, step your left foot back and press through your left heel. Keep your hips squared towards the front. Enjoy this big stretch through your calf. Awesome, we're gonna stay right here. Release your hands, bring them to the front side of the body. Find a nice press through, big stretch as we separate those shoulders. Inhale, bring your arms up together, step your feet together. Exhale, relax your arms down by your side, interlace them again as you step the opposite foot back. Find that press through your heel, nice big stretch through that calf. One more time. Change, switch it around to the front, separate, find some rounding through those shoulders, chin touch the chest. Inhale, step your feet together, bring your arms up overhead, relax your arms down by your side. My quads are tired today, so let's get a nice quad stretch. Find balance on one leg, and then work to bring your two knees side by side. Once you've got them side by side, if you're not feeling that stretch in your quad and your hamstring yet, it's going to turn sideways. Then I want you to point that knee down and even draw your leg behind you. Really find that stretch in the front side of the body. Take two more breaths. We're getting a nice stretch in the shoulder here too. And release, carefully release, other side. So starting doing your best to get your two knees in one line. I have a lot of weight through my standing leg heel, not in the ball of the foot. Working to see if with two knees in one line, I feel a nice stretch in the hip and the quad, the top of the thigh. And if you don't feel it, point your knee towards the floor behind you. Really find that stretch, a little squeeze of your glutes. Awesome, and release. Let's get a nice little stretch of that hamstring. So with your right leg down the floor, go ahead, kick your left heel forward, and then sit back, take a bend in your right knee. Feel the stretch throughout the left leg, especially if you flex those toes up towards your face. Let's go ahead, scoop down to the floor. So on your inhale, scoop down, lift up. One more time, inhale, arms come down, scoop down. Lift up as you finish that exhale. And the other side, bring your right foot forward. Take a bend in that left knee. Just stretch that right glute towards the back of the room. Toes face up towards you. We're going to reach down to the floor as we inhale. Lift up. One more time. Arms come down. Glutes will go back. Inhale. Reach down. Swoop and lift up. Step your feet together, arms up overhead, take a nice stretch over to the right. Biceps in line with your ears, chest open, hips squared to the front of the room, inhale to center. Exhale, find a big stretch over to the left. Inhale, back up to center. Let's swan dive down to the floor one time. Take a generous bend of your knees if you need to. Bend one knee, then the other, get some movement in those hips. Take a moment, shake your head. Yes. Yes, I'm proud I came today. No, I can't believe that time went so quickly. Ah, then plant your feet, bend your knees generously. Oh my gosh, my knees are sweaty. Slowly roll yourself up. One vertebrae at a time. One more time, inhale. Reach up, look up, ground through your feet. Release your shoulders from your ears. Still find that stretch to the ceiling. And in your own time, in whatever shape looks right and feels good for you. Melt those arms down to your side. Take a moment right here in Mountain Pose. Bring a smile to your face and be so proud of yourself for showing up today. If y'all have any questions or concerns about anything that I said or we did in today's workout, I hope that you'll reach out and that you have a wonderful rest of your day, whatever time it is that you joined me. See y'all soon.